Somebody say, praise the Lord. Aren't you glad there's power in the blood tonight? Amen. So I'm going to open up a little something called $50. It's $50. I know I've read this before, but it, it's so funny I'm going to tell it again. Morris and his wife went to the state fair every year. And every year, Morris would tell his wife, Esther, I'd like to take a ride in that helicopter. And Esther always replied, I know you would, Morris, but that helicopter ride is... $50, and $50 is $50. So one year, Esther and Morris went to the fair, and Morris said, Esther, I'm 85 years old. If I don't ride that helicopter now, I might not ever get another chance. And she said, Morris, that helicopter ride is $50, and $50 is $50. Where well, the pilot overheard the couple, and thinking there might could be some fun in this for him, he said, folks, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. He said, I'll take you both up for a ride, and if you can stay quiet for the whole ride and not say a word, I won't charge you a dime. But if you do say a word, then the charge is going to be $50. So Morris and Esther agreed, and up they went. Man, that pilot, he did all kinds of fancy moves, but not a word was heard. I mean, he, he did all of his daredevil tricks over and over, but still, not a word. And when they landed, the pilot turned to Morris and said, I did everything I could to try to make you yell out, and, and you didn't say a word. He said, I'm, I'm quite impressed. Morris said, well, I was going to say something when Esther fell out, but $50 is $50. <laughs> a couple of announcements. This Sunday, I'm going to begin a brand new sermon series entitled, You're So 
weird. And I found a, a uh, comment or a statement that A.W. Tozer made on, online on Facebook this week, and I thought it was so appropriate. He said, you know, you go to church once a week, and nobody will think a thing about it. Nobody will pay any attention to it, but you worship God seven days a week, and you'll become strange. You'll start to stand out from the crowd. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to be different. I'm okay with being different. I don't want to blend in, and that's what we're talking about over the next few weeks. We're called to be different. Saturday, April the 24th, our young adults will be doing, uh, going on an outing, so anybody age 20 to 40-ish that would like to join them, the ladies are going to have a paint class in the fellowship hall that afternoon. The guys are going to go up to the Rock House Marina and do some kayaking and some fishing. Then they're going to meet together uh, for dinner that evening at Sal's. So any young adults, they need to know by this weekend if you would like to go so they can put you uh, in the count for the following weekend. But that will be Saturday, April the, the 24th. And then lastly, the first Sunday of May, which is May the 2nd, we are doing a couple of things. Number one, we're taking in new members uh, that first a few weeks there of May, we'll be doing our members class during Sunday school in the hospitality room. So if you are not a member of the church, but you would like to become an official member, there's a sign-up sheet in the back if you put your name and your phone number on that sheet, and you can sign up for those classes beginning May the 2nd, and then we'll take new members in toward the end of the month. And then also on May the 2nd, we're going to start our spring revival. And we're excited to be able to have a Church of God evangelist with us who travels all up and down the East Coast. He's from Maryland. His name is Reverend Rick Lercy. And he preached for us many years ago, probably 15 years ago, I would say, or, or thereabouts anyway. But he's going to be back with us preaching Sunday, May the 2nd. And we will have Sunday morning, Sunday night services, and then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So it'll be a, a total of five services for our revival, and uh, we hope that all of you guys can, uh, can be a part of that with us. If you'll stand to your feet tonight, we just want to open up in prayer and ask the Lord to touch our, our service tonight. There are several prayer requests we want to, to pray about tonight as we open up. First off, if you continue to pray for Doug Manuel, he had been pretty sick over the, the weekend and ended up going from Pulaski Hospital, transferred to UVA. He is home now, and Pastor Joni and I got to go see him yesterday and was doing remarkably well considering, uh, you know, the, the state he was in in, in UVA. And, and Connie said he was eating well and, and uh, was doing well and, and talking to us and had walked uh, on his walker back to the bedroom. So we're thankful that Doug is doing better, but we want to continue to, to pray for Doug. He, he needs just a healing in, in his body completely, and we know the Lord can. Please pray for Betty Ward. Uh, she was losing some blood, was anemic, and uh, was passing out. She had to go to the hospital. She has been transferred as of this evening over to Warm Hearth, and she'll be there doing some rehab. So please pray for, for Sister Betty. Pray for Carolyn Cope. This is Pastor Stacy Cope. Uh, at the Tower of Refuge Church in Dublin. This is his mom. She is in the hospital and needs our prayers tonight. And I told him that we would uh, would request prayer for her at church, if you'd remember, remember her. Neil Vaughn's dad, if you'd please continue to pray for him. He was involved in that head-on collision. You heard me mention Sunday uh, out on Route 8. His his wife passed away as a result of that, that accident. He is on a ventilator. Uh, his lung has collapsed, has multiple broken ribs. He's gathering fluid, uh, and he's in, a, he's in dire need of, of a miracle. So please pray for, for Neil's dad. And also for Neil, he and Tanya are at the hospital at Roanoke and staying there with his dad and have been there since the accident. So please pray for them. Pray for that family. Pray for the Blevins family. There's a special need there for them. Pastor Karsten Linkus, we want to remember him in prayer. needs a healing in his body. Pastor Mike Bond has been pretty sick, but is, is home now. Uh, and is doing better, but but uh, still needs still needs our prayers. Peter McLeod has a job situation and needs prayer for Juanita Questenberry is dealing with cancer, needs healing tonight. John East also dealing with cancer and needs uh, healing. And then Elizabeth Sifford's mom, if you'd please continue to pray uh, for her tonight. I wonder if there's anybody that has a spoken request that you would like us to uh, take to the Lord in prayer. Maybe something that I did not mention or something that we're not aware of that you'd like us to to pray about tonight anybody at all any unspoken needs you just want to signify by 
a raised hand in your life or somebody you know. Folks are watching by Facebook Live. I know they uh, will sometimes post prayer requests on those comments, and certainly you can do that. We're praying for you as well tonight. I want to take your needs to the, to the Lord. So if you would, just bow your heads and let's all go to the throne of God together. Father, we just come to you tonight in Jesus' mighty and powerful and holy and matchless name. Lord, that name that is above every other name. Lord, that name that still brings healing, that name that still brings peace, the name that, that still brings deliverance. There is power in the blood of Jesus, Lord. And, and we're so thankful that the blood will never lose its power, but it continues to give us strength day after day after day. And we're thankful for the living Word of God that is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. The Word of the living God that you said would go forth in power that, Lord, it would not return to you void or empty, but it would accomplish in our life what you sent it to accomplish. So, Father, I pray that the word would go forth tonight, that, Lord, it would touch these needs, God, these names that, that I requested uh, out loud prayer for this evening for Doug and for Betty and for Carolyn and for Neil and his family, for the Blevins family, for Pastor Linkus and Pastor Bond, for Peter and Juanita and John and Elizabeth's mom. God, we pray for every one of those names, every one of those needs. God, we pray for those that are watching by Facebook Live tonight, Lord, that, that I know there are needs, Lord, that they have that are present in their lives. Or maybe some of them that cannot get to the house of the Lord and, and wish that they could be here. But Lord, we know that you are right there with them, God. You're not bound by time and space, but you are a God who is omnipresent. So you can be here with us in this sanctuary tonight. And at the same time, you can be right there in their home with them. And I pray that you would touch them and revive them, God, and heal them and strengthen them, God, and do what you said you would do. Meet all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And God, I pray for this congregation tonight. I pray, Lord, for those that, that raised their hand just a moment ago and said there's a need in my life for my family or somebody I know that needs a touch from the Lord tonight. I'm asking you to touch them and to bless them and to heal them and to strengthen them and to minister to them. Lord, we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit, God, to, to move in this place tonight, to move in this sanctuary, Lord, to bless God, I pray, your people, God, to let the Spirit of the Lord, we pray, God, just rest upon every heart, Lord, everybody under the sound of my voice tonight, God, that you would strengthen it. And Lord, revive them, God. Let the joy of the Lord, I pray, be our strength tonight, God. We give you glory. We give you praise, Lord. Even, even ahead of the answer, even before the answer comes, we give you praise, God, on credit. We give you praise by faith, believing that you will do what you said you will do, God, that you are who you said you are, God. Lord, we give you praise and glory and honor tonight, Father. We pray for this service. God, for this band and Lord, these singers that God, you would anoint them, Father, to worship. I pray, God, that you would anoint Pastor Joni as she comes in a moment and continues to teach us, Lord, what it means to, to have faith even through the fire, Lord. God, strengthen our faith, God. Enlarge our faith, we pray, God, tonight. And Lord, we'll fail not to give you the glory and fail not to give you the honor and the praise, God, for all that you've done and all that you are doing and all that you continue to do and will do in our lives we give you thanks and we give you the praise we pray all these things in the, that beautiful name of the son of god jesus christ and everybody said and everybody shouted that means let it be so it is shout it one more time amen in jesus name praise god you can be seated in the house of the lord tonight i'm going to invite uh, brother jack if he would come and prepare to wait on the congregation tonight as we sow into the house of the Lord and the work of the Lord through tithes and, uh, and offerings tonight. Brother Jack, would you say a prayer for this offering? Invite the right side. If you guys have an offering tonight, you can stand and exit toward that wall and circle around and up the center aisle. And the left side can do the same thing. You can stand and exit toward the wall, circle around and right up the center aisle. God bless you guys and thank you so much as you give tonight.
been showing me a lot of cool things here lately, and it was just revealing to me that when you hear music and when you hear sound, it's crazy because you can't see none of it, but our science has proven that a frequency goes out, a movement goes out when you make a sound, and it reverberates and it vibrates, but the Lord was showing me that that's not only what your worship does. When you sing praise and when you give God praise. Because not only does that sound start to move you, 
starts does something. It just starts doing something inside of you, something like a reverberation. And I think they called it fire because that's what it feels like when you get into the presence of God. It feels like fire shut up in your bones. And you know, I was thinking while we were worshiping just now, how deep that worship could go. Because that song said it all right there. Should have been me to take that cross. Should have been us. But Jesus took it for us to do something that we can never do. We can never redeem ourselves. But how many know that's an amazing love of a one true God to say, I'm going to lay down my life for them. And if nothing else, let that reverberate through you tonight. If you're listening here right now or by Facebook, let that reverberate in your life and set fire to you of what an amazing love we have in Him. Father God, I just ask you to move in this place. Lord, you brought up reverberation. You brought up moving through sound and worship. So I pray, God, shake us. Is that not what reverberating is? Is it not shaking? Is it not vibrating? God, I want you to vibrate in every part of my being. Reverberate in my soul. And Lord, let it be like fire because as you start to move in me, let the friction start to build up and let your fire be started in me, Lord. And I pray that be the prayer of all the saints and those who are watching my Facebook tonight. That fire would start to set in us. A fire that would burn hotter than any fire that would try to burn us. God, let it be your Holy Ghost fire tonight. God, what I'm really saying, just move in this place. Move amongst your people. Hallelujah. Just move in this place, God. are still being moved the strongholds are still being loose and God we believe yes we can see that wonders are still what you do and bodies are still being raised the giants are still being slain Cause God we believe Yes we can see that Wonders are still what you do We are here for you Come and do what you do We are here for you come and do what you do set our hearts on you come and do what you do we need a move yes we need a move
why we need to move right here. Because miracles happen when you move. Healing is coming in this room. Miracles happen when you move. Heaven is coming. I'll sing miracles happen.
Jesus. While we were singing this song, I couldn't help but think, and you can just play a little more, Amy. I couldn't help but think about what Pastor said before when we was opening up service for prayer, when we went to see Doug. I got a call from Connie Sunday evening and she was all to pieces and she was crying, Kathy, because they were sending him home and she didn't know if he would even make it through the day on Monday. She didn't even know that. And we went over to visit with him and what I saw was not what I was expecting. He was sitting up in that chair. He was very alert. He knew who Pastor was. He knew who I was. And he talked to us the whole time. And we got ready to leave. And we went and prayed and laid hands on him. And the Spirit of the Lord was all over him. And as we were singing this song tonight, that just kept coming in my mind because we serve a miracle-working God. He is here tonight right here for those that are watching by Facebook Live for those that are here tonight God is in our midst and He knows what each one of us needs and He is here so what we need to do is just reach up and receive from the Lord tonight because we serve that miracle working God we serve the God of all possibilities. We thank you, Father, for your presence that is here tonight. We thank you, Lord, that you are in our midst and that we serve the God that can do anything. We serve the God that will take us through the fire. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for the testimonies of those that have been through the fire, Lord. Oh, God, we're putting our faith and our trust in you. We're holding on to you, Lord. And those that are going through the fire right now, Lord, let them look up and call upon your name and know that you are there with them, Lord. We thank you for your presence that we feel here tonight, Lord. Thank you for being in our midst and continue to work throughout this entire service, Lord. We commit it into your hands and we thank you and praise you for your presence here with us. We pray this in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all his children said, amen and amen. Thank you so much to our praise and worship team. Pastor Mikey, we have Appreciate you all and our musicians. There's such a sweet, sweet presence here, and I thank the Lord that we do feel his presence tonight. And tonight what we're going to be talking about in our lesson is divine help in desperate times. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Can we all shake our heads and know that we understand what this title is? is talking about because we've all had times that it's been desperate and we've had to call upon the Lord but I want to tell you one thing and I know you already know this we can call on him and he's always there in the song the part we're on tonight is he never offered our victories without fighting but he said help would always come in time. Did you grasp that? Because I don't know about you, but how many of you have ever said, God, when are you going to take care of this? God, when are you going to do it? But he said he would always come in time. He is and on time God. Now tonight we're going to start off by talking about one of the well most known men in the Bible. And his name is Job. How many of you have studied that or had studies on Job? Now sometimes when things start going wrong in our lives. Job will come to our mind. And we say something like this. Did you hear what Joni did to Jack 
He must have the patience of Job. Have you ever said anything like that? He's shaking his head. But think about that. A lot of times we don't focus on the bright side of Job's story because there's two sides to it. Job was a successful and prosperous man. And he was highly regarded, he was respected, and he was a successful and a prosperous man. But most of the time, we don't remember that. If you go to Job, the first chapter, verses 1 through 3, this is what it tells us. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright and one who feared God and shunned evil. The seven and three, the seven sons and the three daughters were born to him. Also, his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. Now, did you hear what that man had? Now, I'm going to kind of compare it to what it might be for today's time. He had 7,000 sheep, which in our day and time would make a one-man wool industry. He had 3,000 camels, and that would equal to 3,000 vehicles in your driveway. He had 500 yoke of oxen and 500 donkeys, and that would be like owning a 1,000 John Deere tractors. So you just stop and think about this man, what he had. He had a lot. And God trusted Job with all this abundance. And in a conversation with Satan, he had a conversation with Satan. And if you go to Job, the first chapter, uh, verse 8, is this is what God bragged about Job. And this is what he said. Have you considered my servant Job? that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. Think about that for a moment. And I was, as I was studying this lesson, I thought about myself. And I want you to just think about yourself for just a moment. Do you suppose God's ever had a conversation with the devil about us? And told him the things that we were doing and accomplishing for God. Stop and think about that for a moment. But when God was telling Satan all this, guess what? He wasn't one bit impressed at all. And you know what he told God? He told God, he said, the reason that Job was blameless and an upright man was because he had a hedge a protection around him and his household. And Satan told God, he said, if you stretch your hand out and touch all that Job has, he will surely curse you to your face. That's what the enemy said to him. But you know what? The Lord had a reply back to him. And he said, behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay your hand on this person. In other words, you cannot take his life. You can take anything else that he has, but you have to leave him here. God gave him permission to do that. And guess what? That's exactly what happened. Now, all of us know the story of Job. I'm sure most of us do. But I want you just to stop and listen to this for just a moment. Because when we read it and we you, in the Bible, which we do, we're looking at it. This happened to Job. Yes, it did. But do we realize that there's things that happen in our life? There's things that come to us. And I just want you to think about this. How do we react? Think about yourself. I don't want you to think about your husband or your wife or your mom or your dad or your friends. I want you to stop just a moment and think about yourself. 
And when things like this happen to you, how do you react? Now listen to this. He killed Job's children. All his children died. He destroyed his property and his livestock. Job's world was rocked to the core, and he couldn't understand why such tragedy had happened to his family. Yet he knew that the God he served was a good God, was trustworthy, and he was worthy of his worship even in the worst of times. Did you hear that last one? He's worthy of our worship even in the worst of times. And you know, it's easy to come in here when everything's going good, Pastor Adam, in our life. Everything's going good. Everything's fine, Sherry. We can come in. We can get in. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We can have a good time. But you let things get rough in our life and things start going bad, we have a hard time, don't we? We have a hard time worshiping and giving unto the Lord. And Job 1 20 and 22, it said, Then Job arose. Now listen to this. This is amazing. Then Job arose, after all this had happened, tore his robe and shaved his head. And he fell to the ground and he worshipped. And this is what he said. Naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I shall return there. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all this, Job did not sin or charge God with being wrong. Now, most of us, if you just stop and think for a moment, most of us, when things go wrong in our life, the first thing we do is, God, why did you allow this to happen? God, what are you doing? God, I don't understand. I want us to stop and think for just a moment. And I want each one of us to ask this question for ourselves. Every one of you, listen to this question. And I want you to ask it to yourself once I give it to you. What if all my children were killed? And all that I own had been destroyed. Am I going to fall down on the ground and worship God and say, The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Anybody? I don't think probably hardly any of us could raise our hand. I'm being truthful with you, Brother Philip. I can't remember the last time when something bad, really bad happened to me that I was going to. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, you have blessed me, and I thank you for this, and I thank you for that. And I know this is going wrong, but, Lord, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to give you glory. I'm going to give you honor. Most of the time, we're guilty of fussing, of grumbling, of complaining. And our main thing is why. Why did you do this, Lord? Why did you allow this to happen? But let me tell you, we have to understand that God is with us. He will bring us through the fire. He is right there with us. He's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. He's going to be there with us. And I know there's times when you're going through the fire that you feel like you're alone. Anybody ever felt that way? We have. I'll be truthful. I have. But let me tell you, he is there with us. He's not going to leave us. And the amazing thing is, I mean, I just stopped and I thought about this. I mean, here, all this had been taken away from him. And he gave thanks unto the Lord. Think about that. You know, there were days when Job felt lost and that he had no hope. But you know what? He never forsook his God. Instead, he pressed through the struggle. He hung in with God. And he ended up more blessed 
than he ever had been. Job lived to see the better days. You know what? That's what we lose focus of. We lose focus of the better days. We need to understand that God has better days for each one of us. Have you ever been through, through the fire? Any of us been through the fire? I think all of us could say we have. I got hands of people shaking their head. We've been through the fire. But you know, the most amazing thing is, is when we get through and we look back and we see all that God has done. And it's amazing. I tell you, it is totally amazing when you stop and you look back and you say, you know, at the time you're not realizing it, but you come through and you see all that God brought you through. And the most wonderful thing about that is if he'll bring you through, he'll bring me through. And if he'll bring me through, he'll bring you through. And we need to understand that and we need to remember that. You know, we've all seen desperate times. And maybe this morning, there's some people maybe watching by Facebook Live or here today that you climbed out of the bed this morning, but deep down inside, you were thinking, I wish I didn't have to get up and face this day. You may feel like that it's just a time, Lord, I, I, I just can't deal with this anymore. But tonight I want to tell you that no matter the situation that you're facing right now, there's one thing that is for certain, and that is found in Job 19 and 25. And it says, For I know that my Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. That ought to make every one of us in this building shout tonight. I know that my Redeemer lives. I can stand here and testify. And if I handed this microphone to each one of you, you would have a testimony. And you would be saying the very same thing. I know that my Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. I want you to listen to that song for just a moment. My Redeemer lives, and I want you to worship the Lord. I want you to just think about your Redeemer. He lives.
Praise the Lord. You know that your Redeemer lives? Just stop and think about this for a moment. Did you talk to God this morning? Did you talk to Him today sometimes? We need to know that our Redeemer lives. Jason Crabb said that when he stepped out into the solo ministry, we talked a little bit about it last week, he said he had a lot more responsibility and a lot more expense that he was not expecting. And he said that the joy of the new path that he was on, he said it began to evaporate and he could see where huge amounts of obstacles started standing in his way. Now, he was so excited about being in the solo ministry. He, he loved that part of it, but he didn't realize all the things that were going to come his way. And he said even though he had that desire to sing music and to preach God's word, he noticed that he started, his words began to be negative. Stop and think about that a moment. Have you ever noticed when you're going through the fire, your words aren't too positive? <laughs> They're on the negative side, and you tend not to look at the good side. He said he was so worried about all the things that he needed and all the things that, that had to be done, he said that he put his faith on the back burner. And instead of seeing the amazing road that God had ahead for him, he started focusing on all the stumbling blocks that were in the way. And you know, that's what the enemy will try and do. He will try and put stumbling blocks in our way to prevent us from doing what God has called us and wants us to do. And he said, he was negative. He said he got a negative spirit, and he started saying negative things. But he said he was so thankful that God had given him a wife that loved him enough to read him the riot act. Aren't you mean glad for your wives? Speaking of which, today's mine and Jack's anniversary. We've been married 43 years. Yeah. Yeah, and I still tell him what to do. Anyway, <laughs> and so one night she took him, Jason, they were on the bus, and she took him to the back of the bus, and she said, Honey, I, I need to talk to you. There's a problem going on. All I'm hearing you do is whine and complain, and I'm watching you mope around. You need to stop and look at at what God, now listen to this, has already done. Okay, there's a road up ahead of us, but turn around and look and see what God has already done. He's going to get you through the fire. He didn't say it was always going to be easy. He didn't say it was always going to be fun. Those times are going to come to each one of us. But that's when we look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and put our trust in him. She didn't tell Jason what he wanted to hear. She told him that day what he needed to hear. And there's a time that that needs to happen to each one of us. We, we need to hear what we need to hear, not what we want to hear. So she brought faith to the front so that God's grace could operate in Jason's life. And she helped him that day to realize that he was trying to carry God's part of the ministry. Can I tell you, when God calls us, God has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. And guess what? He is going to work it out. So many times we try to put our hands in there and try to make it our way. It's not our way. It's 
his way. And we need to remember that. And he said that the words of his wife got hold of him and he got back on track. He listened to those words she told him. And he didn't only listen to them, he put them into action. And when he did, he said he started th seeing things change. We got to put things in the hand of the Lord. There's some things we can do, but there's some things we got to give to him and say, God, I place it in your hands. Help me through this fire because I need your help. Jason said that he realized that we are not called to pump up our faith until it's big enough to take us through the fire. Listen to this. We have to use the faith we have, and he will make something big out of it. Jesus said in Matthew 17 and 20, these are his words, for surely I say to you, if you have the faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible with you. God didn't say we had to have mountains of faith. He said if we take that little bit of faith and we would say to that mountain, mountain, you be moved. What's going to happen? It's going to move. It's going to move. The measure of faith is not the the measure of faith is not a matter of how much you have, but of what you do with it. Think about that for a moment. All we need to do is plant the seed of faith, believe God is God, and He will take us through the fire. He will. We have witness of it. Every one of us that are Christian and are serving the Lord, we have all been through the fire at one time or another, and he has brought us through. And that is something we need to praise the Lord about. We need to be thankful for, and we need to stand on his word. We need to put our trust in God because he is 100% trustworthy and I want you to hear this in every situation we can put 100% trust in God because he is the one that is going to bring us through and I tell you what when you're in there you don't always feel that way amen is that true we don't always feel that way. We tend to look on the bad side. We tend to get down. We tend to get discouraged. But you know what? He pushes us on. He keeps telling us to go through. Because I tell you what, when you come through it and you're standing on this side and you're looking back, wow, you talk about victory. You talk about, and another thing too, how many of you have ever heard somebody's testimony? Oh, man, you've heard somebody's testimony, and it just thrilled you and encouraged you and helped you because you know if God does it for them, he's going to do it for you. I want you to listen to this powerful testimony. This is about a, a young man. He's from Oklahoma, and he was on a four-wheeler, and he was involved in a horrible, it was a terrible accident. The vehicle flipped over, now listen to this, and it crushed every bone in his face. And that's what it said, every bone in his face, and he was in a coma for 26 days. And the doctor said there is no hope for him. He's not going to survive. He's not going to make it through. He said that's not going to happen. But many people started praying for him. They started praying that he would recover, and a miracle took place, and he survived. The doctors, they said they were just totally amazed because they didn't even expect him to live. And once he became conscious, he told his dad that while he was in the coma, and I want you to listen to this, 
He heard the lyrics from the song through the fire. While he was in that coma for 26 days, that was the song that was going through his mind. And he, he kept saying the part that kept getting a hold of him was, help will always come in time. How many of you know that? Help will always come in time. And it did. He had a long recovery ahead of him. And he had injuries that were life-changing. Listen to this. These are some of the things that he had to deal with. His esophagus was damaged so that he could not swallow anything without almost choking to death. He couldn't eat, so he couldn't eat, so he had to be on a feeding tube. He said his face was so messed up that they had to create his jaw structure again. They had to create it themselves and make it again, and he had no teeth and no chance of any more teeth growing back. After six years, listen to this, after six years of not being able to swallow or eat, he was at church one Sunday morning, and they got up, and guess what song they were singing? Through the fire. And they said, as they were singing that song, he got up out of his seat, and he went walking around while they were singing. And he said, while he was walking around, God told him, he said, tomorrow you're going to be able to eat. You're going to be able to eat food. So he said he went home. He was so excited. And he said he was determined that he was going to hold on to what God had told him. He was going to hold on to that faith because he knew that when he was in that coma, he heard that song through the fire. He knew that morning, that Sunday morning, that God brought him to church. And they were singing that same song, that God was saying something to him. So he said the next day, even after all the times he had choked when he had tried to eat something, he was going to stand on God's promise. And he said he sat down and he began to eat and there was no choking. He was able to eat that meal and he said, praise God, he's been eating ever since then. No problems whatsoever. And you know what? He gets up and he shares his testimony whenever he can. And you know, one thing about sharing your testimony of what God has done, because God is no respecter of persons. And Brother Philip, if he'll bring you out, he'll bring me out. Amen? We need to look at it like that. If God will bring that one out, he's going to bring me out too. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Sometimes we don't understand the path that God takes us on. And I've told you this before. Sometimes we, don't, sometimes we may never understand, Kathy. We may look back and we may never understand. And then there's times that we look back and we're like, I totally understand but either way we have to realize that we may go through the fire but help will always come in time remember that we're not a people that like to wait we're a people that want things done immediately and there are times when God does things immediately amen but there's sometimes that we have to to wait but we need to do that because God will take us through the fire it may not be as fast as we want it to be 
But let me tell you, once you go through that, just like this young man, he had a testimony that he could share with other people to encourage them, to help them, and to strengthen them. And I believe sometimes that's why we go through the fire, because we're going to be a help and a blessing to others. So I want you to stop and think about this. And I want you to just remember that if you're going through anything, that God is with you. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. And he will bring you through the fire. Amen. That's the end of the lesson tonight. God bless you all. Appreciate you coming. Thank you so much.